going on, guys? We hanging out. We smoking a cigarette as usual. I love you. It's from a channel tradition now. But we, um... Dropped a load of rice hull sacks. Brought them from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Up to, um... Bracken Ridge, Pennsylvania, which is right outside Pittsburgh. Delivered them. And now... We are in Millersburg, Ohio, looking at the snow coming down in Amish country. Okay, right now, the drive out here was pretty cool. You know, it's a two-lane back road, hills, curves, like a damn roller coaster. Tell you what. And uh, horse and buggies, bicycles, you know, everything. It's pretty badass. Like, the way of life out here, kind of cool. You know, it makes me think like the old time western days, you know. It's just like all the buggies and the farms, and I, I just, it's just cool to me, you know. It's kind of neat. Yeah, we out here at this uh, lumber mill. I'll show yeah, you that real quick. My trash bag, I need to dispose of, but we out here in Ohio. Got the snow coming down a little bit. Got a little ice on the trailer. I'm about busting my ass when I got out the truck because that's like ice right there on that mud. But you know. Out here in Amish country, came here last night, stay the night, and he's about to get loaded, so. Faces already. I've been out here in the cold, as y'all probably seen from the video. It's snowing a little bit, not hard, but it is a little chilly out there, that's for sure. And I've been out there for probably about a good hour, hour and a half, and I need to get back in the truck. And since I got my paperwork, oh geez, my hair is all wind blown and tore up. Since I need to submit my paperwork anyway, might as well get in here warm up, and then we got to get back out there again. Three tarp load. This is when flatbed becomes fun, I guess. This is what everybody's always talked about, you know, winter flatbed. Well, this is. This is probably it right here. So, uh, right now we're just submitting our uh, loaded call and our rolling call. The way we do it is our loaded call. When we get our paperwork, we send it a loaded call with our bill lading, weight, quantity, that kind of shit, what trailer we have. And then a rolling or a rolling call is when we're going to be there. So, I need to stop looking at that. It's going to drop me nuts. You know, we're going to leave it alone. Just leave it alone. Um, what's today? Today is the 4th, January 4th. So we're going to Georgia. It's like 571 miles. We can do that in a day. So we're gonna be there tonight. The only problem with that is they're gonna be closed like right after we get like right when, right when we get there. They're gonna be closed. Like they'll close like an hour before we're supposed to get there. So um, we're gonna go into the ETA first thing in the morning. We're gonna go there tonight because I just called them. I uh, asked, "Hey, do you have overnight parking?" He's like, "Yeah, just park on one side of our gate so you're not blocking us. We'll get you in the morning." So perfect. So I'm gonna just go ahead and go straight there, park overnight. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to do our uh, ETA as the 5th. So for tomorrow, 0105. And we'll do, we'll be there tonight. So we'll do 0800, 8 o'clock tomorrow. Most, seems like no matter what, um, every time I set an appointment for the morning, it's always like 8 o'clock. It's never 7 or 6. It's like always 8 o'clock. So I just do the same thing. Might as well. Pieces. Because sometimes they'll set it for us. Sometimes. This one's already messed up because I was supposed to be here uh, yesterday to load, but I got hung up at the receiver. So let's say yesterday was the third, right? I was holding these uh, things of uh, rice ash, and I was supposed to have that delivered. Uh, I delivered yesterday morning. Well, I got there yesterday morning, let me say that. And um, waited like three and a half, four hours when I finally got the last piece off my trailer. So that really screwed the pooch. It was 1.30 when I left Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania 
and I'm over here in, um, where the hell am I at? Millersburg, Ohio, right? I was supposed to be here for 1230, okay? Three hours away from Pittsburgh. And I was still in Pittsburgh at 130. I'm like, yeah, this ain't gonna happen. Like, I was like checking out the security gate, getting back in the truck, ready to go. And uh, yeah, that's, it was like, there's no way I'm gonna make it here. Cause they said this place stops receiving at 330. Or they'll, they'll stop accepting at 330. And I'm like, I'll be lucky to make that for four without traffic or nothing like that. There's a lot of hills and mountains and shit like that. Being empty when it's slowing down too much, but you know, it's still a other traffic. So I got on the dispatcher. I'm like, look, I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it there by four. I don't think it's possible. Unless this truck can go like 80 mile an hour, but I'm not gonna do that anyway, because you know, I try to get no tickets. But uh, yeah, so I was like, well, I'll, I'm gonna go ahead and get there. I got here last night, uh, parked back there in this corner lot. And, uh, yeah, started the day off this morning. So, that's what we're doing. Warm it up, just submitted all my paperwork, and I'll show you all that real quick. For the glare, but uh, this is our Omni tracks here. And, you know, you have all these macros. That's what you call a macro one, two, three, four, etc. So, you know, what I got here, you know, you'll arrive at Shipper. Your loaded calls have to get your paperwork, so I can kind of give you that. Um, loaded calls, my outbox. The driver tarp load, yes, which I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to, so that's what I had submitted that. The weight on the bills, how many pieces, my trailer number, are you dropping a trailer, cleared inspection, yada, yada, yada. That's your rolling call, shows your ETA, what date, time, goes by military time, bill of lading number, weight, and that, that's it. So, then we also have uh, home time request, uh, you know, arrive at the consignee. I did that yesterday while I was hauling them sacks. Uh, you know, it's just shit like that. So, cool deal. Cool stuff. That's how we do it. I'm going to uh, hop out the truck and tarp. Now, I'm out here in Amish country. You know, they don't uh, they don't require hard hats or nothing. Um, most places do. I usually wear it, but they don't require it out here. And if they don't require it, I'm not going to wear it. I'm sorry, but that's just how I am. Uh, but I got to crawl on top of this load. They don't have any tarping station or nothing. I mean, we're out here in the woods. Like, woods woods you should i wish i had a dash cam to record the drive out here just like hills and curves it's like a roller coaster it really was so uh anyways i'm gonna prop my phone up over there where it was earlier and we'll do a time lapse that's gonna take probably a good 30 minutes at least to roll these shits out so we can get up there not bust our ass luckily the wood don't have snow on it now the trailer's got snow and ice on it i about i about bust my rear end this morning i got on that thing and i whoa caught myself real quick but uh yeah so we're gonna Luckily, the forklift guy, too. Shout out to him. I never got his name, but luckily, he was a badass dude. And he was like, hey, put your tarps on this last bundle. I'll put it on top. And I'm like, hell right. You know? Awesome. Love when that happens. Because lunging them things up there by yourself, pain in the ass. Because they're every bit of... The black tarps, 80 pounds. The blue tarps are like 90 to 100 a piece. And, now, and they're like... One of them was on my deck, so I couldn't fit it in my box because it was cold as hell yesterday. I couldn't roll it up good. Couldn't fit it in my box with my other ones. So it has snow and ice on it. So that one's like really heavy with all that. Mm, it's like frozen. Half-ass frozen. So, yeah, this is when it gets fun. So I'm going to prop you up over there. I hope I got phone storage. My phone don't die, but we're going to see. Try to get at least some of me rolling out the tarp time-lapsed. And, uh, yeah. And we're going to hit the road. staircase on the back so i was able to go on the back and climb up well i'm dirty so yeah we got the shit secured we got 12 13 straps each strap's like 5400 pounds securement hold but i just round down to five you know when that round down so you always have more so this load's 43,000 pounds we're gonna go scale it and we'll walk you through how i scale my loads too and then um you know, scale makes sure we're legal. We should be. My suspension gauge on my drives is 50, under 50, so I know I'm legal on my drives. Because my truck, I can go up to 60, I'll be legal the way this freight liner's set up. 
So if it's 43,000, it means majority of the weight's on the trailer, because I probably got like 24. It's actually probably pretty evenly loaded. I probably got like 24, 25,000 ish on my, um, dude, my hair's driving me nuts. I'm gonna brush it out. <laughs> I always mess with my hair. Um, side point, stupid. Um, I probably got 24,000 on my drive, so at least be probably about 20, 19 to 20,000 on my trailer. So it's pretty close to being evenly loaded. So we're gonna get out of here. We're gonna wait for these guys to get out of the way. I'm gonna back up, turn around, get out. We gotta navigate through all these back roads, and then we'll be hitting the road. So yeah, let's get right, it. So we uh, made it to the pilot that's closest to our um, shipper, and went ahead and scaled the load. We backed in because there's really not a whole lot of parking going on here. So we backed in, so we're gonna block them away. Do a quick little load check. Good thing I like to do is uh, oh, I got a big old hole in my glove. Grab my winch, go like that. If I can't wiggle it, it's still tight enough. That's a good way to check. So you want to check in the first 50 miles. That see that one's got a little bit of a wiggle. Maybe hear it. So I can probably get a click out of that one. It's really not that loose to have to worry about. That one, I need an adjustment. This one probably too. These are getting loose a lot more than the ones on the front because being over the trailer right here, the trailer axles, it bounces a lot more going down the road than it does up there. So, settling down good. Probably get a click out of that. Click out of that. Go ahead and look at our tires too while we're walking around. Got air in them. That one's got a little bit of peeling going on. It's definitely a recap, but still good tread. No big bumps. A little bit loose. A little bit loose but that's all good we got the dump truck on the back had just enough room for it hanging out but yeah we're gonna go and uh get the winch bar tighten these suckers down go get us a drink go to the bathroom and we're gonna hit the road i really need to get a head mount because hold my phone my hand doing this stuff it's a little bit difficult one cup will do. Nice and snug. Then we'll do the other side as well. That one's really still tight, surprisingly. This thing right here, a little loose. Snug her up. I don't want that thing flying off. All right, here we go. So we're gonna be sitting here waiting for the next load. Uh, see what happens. Having the dump truck back on, you know. She's ready to go down the road too. A uh, really cool place. I didn't get the guy's name, but he drives a, a blue Peterbilt over. He works for the place. Because when I first originally pulled up here, well, not here, but to the main office, I was sitting there and I got, I literally pulled in with zero minutes this morning. I pulled like at two o'clock in the morning. Zero fucking minutes. And I um, woke up this morning, had a 12 o'clock appointment, and uh, well, uh, a driver was one of the managers that had talking to me, the forklift guy, he was like, hey, you know, with your load, you're gonna bring, we're going to bring you to lay, our laydown yard just around the block. I'm like, all right, no problem, you know, and fucking, well, I had to wait for my 10-hour break to reset because I didn't want to advance the load. You know, I literally had no hours, none, zero. So I waited for, um, I'm going to close this talk box real quick. I'll keep you on the phone. So I waited for, um, Super fast. So, um, this place right here is uh, Sisson Log Homes. I guess how you pronounce that? Sisson Log Homes in Blue Ridge, Georgia. 
great fucking place. Great customer service. The dude that even loaded me, he pulled this Jeep up. I guess it's his personal vehicle over there. And he said, man, while you're waiting for a load, you can sit here, you know, do what you got to do. If, um, if you need to uh, go to the store, go get food, anything, park your truck, take my Jeep, you know. So really awesome customer service. So he wants to say, hey, what you doing, girl? Really awesome customer service, super nice people. So if you come to Sisson's uh, Log Cabins, Log Company in Blue Ridge, Georgia, they're uh, pretty awesome. They really take care of their people, really nice. So uh, yeah, we got unloaded, and now we're just waiting to see where we're gonna go after this. So uh, I think it's gonna wrap up this video. I'm gonna try to do probably like one load as a video. And um, I plan on investing in getting a, um, a GoPro with a head mount, so I don't have to just, I mean, I like doing the time lapse, so y'all can kind of see the load unload process securement. But I'd also like to be able to have a, I might still do that, be able to get a head mount where I can have like a POV of what I'm doing. So, yeah, besides that, you know, it's uh, it's 571 miles down. We sent in our paperwork and uh, ready to see what we get next. So, appreciate y'all tuning in and we'll catch y'all on the next one.